Hello team, this is Dr. Michael McCarthy, and today we're going to talk about logistic regressions. Let's go ahead and learn by doing. I'm going to go ahead and click the in and out tab up here and make sure I can input some data. I'm going to configure this icon in the input data configuration window, and I know that mine is a file. I'm going to go to iris underscore data. And one point about file naming conventions, there is no spaces in any of these file names. You always want to have an underscore or a period. If you have a space, that will cause confusion in many of our programming softwares we will use. So no spaces. And I get a pre-look at the, all of my different data. You can see it's comma separated variable, CSV file. I get the first 100 records over here on the left. And then I will always add a browse function after every single tool I use. After I input, I want to begin with my auto field. And if I look at, if I look at what it, it came in, they all come in as strings and that's not what I need. I know that four of my five variables are in fact numeric. So I'm going to use auto field to help identify those. And of course I will add with a right click, add the browse function to help me see it afterwards. And if, as a good practice, uh, through my exploratory data analysis, I know I don't need this, but as a good practice, I'm going to use the data cleaning. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. As you can see as an output, the different numeric variables are now doubles, and the class remains a string. I know that a logistic regression can only have two values for the dependent variable. A lot of times it's a zero or a one. Alteryx is designed to use any two variables and they need to be string. So if I do have a zero or one, I need to recategorize my variables as a string value, and not a byte or not a double. I transition from the metadata look to the data look with the toggles over here on the right. I realize that I have 150, I have 150 values in three different types of classes. And I click on class over here, I can see I have three uniques, 150. Well, I don't need three, I need two. So I'm going to use the filter button to help me identify the ones that I want. Now, sometimes it's easier to identify the ones you want, or sometimes it's easier to identify the ones you do not want. So I'm going to write does not equal, and I'm going to select the one that I don't want. And I'm going to choose from the second batch, this iris, Virginica. I'm going to select that field and I'll copy the selected cell without header. And I'll come back over to the filter field and paste that right in here. So I, it's exactly as it is in the data. And then once again, I'm going to right click and add all browsers to this. Well, let's go ahead and run this. And you can see as an output that there's 100 here and 50 in here. So I had a good split. And where I, the data that I want is coming off the true. So I'm going to go to my predictive tab and find the logistic regression and have it come off of the true tab. And again, right click on top of it and select all browsers. And then before we run this, I have to select the target variable. This is also called the dependent variable. And in this case, there's only one that it can be because it has to be a string variable. And we have one variable identified as a string. Now, as a shortcut, I'm going to select all and then deselect class. And at this point in time, this is all configured. And I will click run again. When I click on the browse button, you can see that on the left, it shows the different outputs. This middle one is our model that comes from the logistic regression. And this last one is a little bit of analysis on how it came out. And you can see that it perfectly predicted all the positives and all the negatives. This is a nice way to see how well the model did. Now, I want you to see that this model only predicts uh, two out of three classes. So what I can do actually is I can highlight all of them right click copy and then right click paste right below it. And then right here, instead of having it not equal Iris Virginica, I can come back 
and copy without headers the iris setosa paste and I'll run this. And if I was real clever, what I could do is, well, then let's take a look at the results. And you can see the results are a little bit different. When it comes down to the bottom, it still does an excellent job of predicting what there is one that did not work out as well. So the other thing I can do, believe it or not, is I actually can delete all of this and then have the wire come down here. Rather than having it repeat those steps. Thanks for watching.